In this video, we're looking at definitions of keywords in two-dimensional geometry. First up, we've got the word polygon. Now, a polygon is simply a two-dimensional shape with straight sides. Here we've got examples of several polygons. First of all, we've got three-sided shapes over on the left. These are triangles. Next, we've got four-sided polygons. Those are quadrilaterals. And then on the right, we have a couple of five-sided polygons, and they have a special name. They are called pentagons. Six-sided shapes, by the way, are called hexagons. Seven-sided shapes are called heptagons. And eight-sided shapes are called octagons. So a polygon is the general name for a shape with any number of straight sides. Obviously, we have special names for certain shapes, like we've just mentioned, triangle, quadrilateral, pentagon, and so on. While we're on here, some polygons also have special properties. There's something in common to all three of these in the top row. Can you spot what it is? Each of these polygons is what is called a regular polygon. And what that means is that in each case, all the sides are of the same length and all the angles within are the same size. Let's take a look at the first one. What we're saying is that this is a triangle where the three sides are the same length and these interior angles here are the same size. Now this triangle, as well as being called a regular triangle, has a special name. You've probably already come across it. It's an equilateral triangle. Next, we've got this four-sided shape. This is also regular because it has four sides that are the same length and all of the interior angles are the same size. You've also probably come across the name of this before. It's a square. Next, we have a regular five-sided shape. So we've got five sides that are the same length and five interior angles that are all the same size. This is simply called a regular pentagon. In contrast, these shapes underneath are irregular or not regular. Now we're looking at two more keywords. First of all, edge. I've already used this word when talking about polygons. Edge is simply another word for side. We prefer to use the word edge in mathematics. Now in two dimensional geometry, an edge is simply part of the boundary of the area of a shape. It's easiest to see on a diagram, so what I'm highlighting are the edges of this shape here. So in green, we've got the edges. And as I've said, these form the boundary of the area of a two-dimensional shape. Now, a vertex is simply another word for corner. Again, we prefer to use the word vertex in mathematics. Now, a vertex, a corner is simply a place where two edges meet in two-dimensional geometry. Here would be a vertex. You can see it's the meeting point of this edge along the top and this edge along here. We've also got another vertex here, here and here. One other thing you should know, by the way, is that the plural of vertex is vertices. So this shape has four vertices. Finally, we need to know what the words equal and parallel mean in the context of two-dimensional geometry. When we talk about equal, we could be talking about equal lengths or equal angles. Let's have a look at lengths first of all. In this rectangle, you can see that we have two edges of equal length over on the left and the right. So we can show that by using a dash. The dash indicates that those two edges are of the same length. But we also have another pair of edges that are the same length. We've got this one along the top and this one along the bottom. The problem is it would be misleading to use a dash like that for the top and bottom. Can you see why this is misleading? Hopefully you can see why this is misleading. This gives you the impression that we have four edges or sides that are all the same length. That's clearly not true. We have 
two edges that are longer and two edges that are shorter. The way we get around this is by using different symbols. So for these two edges along the top and bottom, I could use a double dash like that. This now shows that those two edges are the same length, but they are different from the other two edges, which are the same length as each other. So this is no longer misleading. Let's take a look at the second shape. This shape happens to be an isosceles trapezium. And what that means is that we've got two edges that are the same length. These dashes show that the two edges in question are this one along the left and this one along the right. They are the same length. We could also use the word equal in the context of angles. In the trapezium, we have an angle down here that is the same size as the angle over here. To make clear that they are the same size, we could use a special symbol. Instead of this standard marker for angles, we could go with a double marker. And that shows that they are the same size. It also happens to be the case that these two angles at the top are equal in size to each other, but they're obviously different from the angles down here. So we can use a different marker for those. We could use a triple angle marker, for example. That tells us that this angle is equal to this angle, but that these angles are different from the angles down below. Watch the video for lesson G15A for all you need to know about types of angle. For example, obtuse angles, acute angles, and actually right angles, which are what the angles are in this rectangle. Finally, we have to look at the definition of the word parallel. Now, several students get confused between the words equal and parallel. We've seen that equal, when we were talking about edges, meant that those edges are the same length. It has nothing to do with the direction of travel. For example, in this trapezium, we've got a pair of parallel edges. These two lines are parallel. That means that they never meet. Even if we were to extend them forever in both directions, those lines would never cross. They are like railway tracks. And the way we show parallel lines is by using an arrow. A technical definition of parallel lines is that they are always a constant distance apart. So we could measure this distance here and this distance here. And we could measure it anywhere along this pair of lines. They are always going to be the same distance apart. And this would be true even if you extended these forever in both directions. Technically, these edges are actually line segments of infinite lines that go on forever. Let's take a look at the rectangle now. We've got a pair of parallel edges on the left and right. So even if we extended these line segments forever, they would never meet. So we can mark those parallel edges using arrows like this. Notice in this particular case, these edges of the rectangle are parallel and they are also equal. But this symbol here only tells you that they are parallel. In the trapezium, we had these two parallel edges, but they were not equal. They were not the same length. So be really careful. You can have parallel edges that are not the same length. Let's go back to the rectangle because we haven't quite finished yet. We've also got another pair of parallel edges. But again, it would be misleading if we were to use the same arrow on these edges. So what we are going to do is use a double arrow. We could do something like this. That simply shows that these two edges are parallel, but they are not parallel to the other pair of edges. So that's a quick introduction to some of the key words you need to know in two-dimensional geometry. Remember, if you want to learn more about the types of angle, go to lesson G15A.